This video was made possible by Skillshare. More on that later. Hey everyone, it's Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering the top 10 plus some bonus rookie mistakes that you may be making when flying your drone. And I'll be the first to say that I have made pretty much all of these mistakes in my learning experience of flying drones, and even some of them I've made more recently. So no matter where you are on your drone journey, these could all apply to you, maybe just a couple or maybe none of them if you're just, you know, perfect drone angel. But I do wanna say that all of these apply to no matter what drone you're flying. It doesn't have to be just a DJI drone or even specifically the Mavic Air 2 that I'm flying in this video. These apply to any drone. So no matter where you are on your journey, no matter what you fly, this video should apply to you. So with that said, let's hop into mistake number one. Mistake number one involves something that you may not really even think about, but is important when you are powering on your drone. And this involves the sequence of events for when you are powering on your drone. When powering on your drone, you always want to make sure to power on your remote controller before you power on the drone itself. And the reason for this is because if your drone happens to go and do something wonky as you power it on, if your controller isn't on and you're not able to gain control of it, then that's not an ideal situation. And wonky situation, I mean like maybe the motors power up for whatever reason, you have to shut them off. This isn't something that really ever happens with DJI drones, at least none that I've heard of, but it is something that can occur on some older drones and some homegrown built drones that you've built yourself. So always, when you're powering it on, power on your controller and then your drone. Mistake number two is in regards to flying way too high outside of the regulated altitude, at least in the United States. Don't fly your drone above 400 feet AGL. And I will say that this differs from country to country, but if you're flying within the United States, the FAA regulates that drones cannot fly above 400 feet AGL. And AGL stands for above ground level. And what it sounds like is exactly what it means. So when you take off from ground level, that's what they consider ground level, you can fly 400 feet above that. So if you're flying above a mountain or something like that, you can actually maintain 400 feet above the highest point that you are currently perpendicular to. So whether you're flying around a mountain or you're coming near a building, you can fly above that, however, only if you are part 107 certified. With a mountain, that's kind of iffy. You can go and fly above ground level, but if you're trying to fly above a skyscraper or a tower or something like that, you have to have a remote pilot's license, which is a part 107 for flying drones, which is something that I actually have and uh, does allow me to go above things. So if I flew right over there, there is a radio tower that I could fly above 400 feet if I really wanted to because I am part 107 certified, but you can't do that if you're just a regular hobbyist flyer. So that is something to keep in mind. Moving on and alongside the same idea of regulations, at least in the United States, on rookie mistake number three is don't fly outside of visual line of sight. Visual line of sight is exactly that, maintaining visual line of sight with your drone at all times. Now, I understand when you've got your, you know, your screen on your phone or your tablet, however you're viewing the camera of your drone, you're like, well, I'm looking at it here and it's fine. But if your drone goes and loses connection, you always should be able to see where your drone is in the sky. So then you can easily bring it back visually if your phone decides to crap out or the app or the camera just stops working, whatever it may be you're always supposed to maintain visual line of sight. And with that in mind, rookie mistake number four kind of leads off of that and also involves the lack of line of sight and is the rookie mistake of not knowing how to read the drone compass down in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Now this one is a little bit more dialed in towards DJI. Some other drone manufacturers have a similar function inside of their apps and different controllers and stuff like that. But specifically for DJI, the one that they throw onto the screen is this one down here. So the way to read this, if you're just looking at this and thinking this looks like craziness, is basically the middle is the drone itself. So that little blue triangle-ish shape in the middle is the drone itself. Those white lines on top of it that are moving up and down right now is the bank angle of the drone. So if it moves up, that means that the drone angle is going down like that. And if it moves down, that means the drone is moving like that. If you try to bank left or right, you'll see that those lines move that way as well. So depending on where your drone is, it will move like that, which is really cool. And then lastly, like I said, that home point, that is actually you, the controller. So the way to use this, if your drone is just out there and you don't know where it is, simply go and line the drone up, point it towards that H, 
and then just fly forward. And you will be home very shortly, which is great. You can also go and just look at this on the map because if you look at here, you can look at your home point as well. So you can see that right now, awesome. It is flying right towards the home point and that just works out great. So if you need to figure out how to get home, that is how you do that. Rookie mistake number five that you may be making is forgetting to set your auto RTH height. RTH is return to home if you didn't know what that means. Most drones out on the market nowadays, that's almost a given that they have an RTH feature built into it. And so when you have that, you need to make sure that you're always setting the RTH height when you go and take off. Don't do it while in the middle of the flight. Do it as you're taking off and get it as a habit for when you were flying your drone. So to do this on the DJI Mavic Air 2, simply click on the settings in the top right hand corner, go to safety, and once you scroll down, you'll see there is auto RTH altitude. Right now I have it only set at 114 feet, um, but you should probably set it at a little over 200 feet because most trees are gonna be much cleared at that height. So if you are flying around somewhere where there are like radio towers like we went to earlier, then you're gonna want to go and consider moving that RTH height up even higher just so then it avoids anything if you have an emergency and you have to initiate RTH so it comes to home. Also pro tip, another easier way to go and adjust this is actually just to click the in flight in the top left hand corner. And right here you can set your RTH altitude. As you can see, it's at the very top. So this is definitely an important thing to go and change as you are in flight. Also in the RTH spectrum, if you go and move your controller and you're in a different location, always make sure to go and update your auto RTH home point so then your drone doesn't go and return to your original location. So if you're walking around maybe on a beach or something and you're flying your drone and you walk like a couple hundred feet away, obviously you don't want the drone to return to that original home point unless you're planning on walking back that way. So in order to update the home point, you do the same thing up here in settings and then you just click on update home point. Real quick before moving into the next mistake that rookies make though, I've got a quick word from this video's sponsor, Skillshare. If you're someone who hasn't heard of Skillshare before, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey by learning. Whether it be photography, aerial videography, web development, productivity, YouTube success, or an endless number of other topics, Skillshare is the absolute best platform to expand your skills and gain a deeper knowledge on the things that you already love learning about. For me personally, I've really recently enjoyed Marquez Brownlee's or MKBHD's class called YouTube Success, Shoot, Script, and Edit Video, which no matter if you're a beginner in shooting YouTube videos or you're a veteran in creating content, it's an absolutely brilliant class that is ought to teach you something that you've never thought of before from one of YouTube's best. I plan to use pretty much everything that I've learned in that class to expand my content throughout my content creation this year and beyond. Skillshare is always launching new premium classes that are entirely ad-free on the Skillshare platform for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Members get unlimited access to Skillshare's entire catalog of content, so consider joining today because thanks to Skillshare, the first 1,000 of you guys who are watching this very video and click the link in the video description below will get free access to a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership so you can begin learning no later than today. Thanks to Skillshare as always for supporting the channel and for supporting this very video. And with that said, let's get back into some of the mistakes that rookies make. Rookie mistake number six is simply just forgetting to update your drone's firmware before leaving the house. And the reason why you wanna do this is for some obvious reasons that you've probably encountered yourself before. And this is just simply that if you get out in the middle of nowhere and you're flying your drone, you don't wanna waste your time to update the firmware. You don't wanna waste the battery life and you don't wanna waste your data going and updating the drone's firmware. So always make sure when you're at your house to go and update the firmware before leaving and getting out there because then you can have, first of all, fast internet to go and download the firmware updates. You also have the opportunity to recharge your battery before going out and flying. And three, it doesn't take away from your fun time out flying your drone. Rookie mistake number seven is using the screen to move your gimbal. Now, to each their own on the creative technique, and you know, if you work better by moving the gimbal around, by going and touching the screen, that's great. But if you wanna get more advanced shots and pro level shots, then you are just simply not going to want to use that method. And I have known a couple of people to do that. You might think that, that I'm crazy for even saying this, but I really have. And some people didn't even know that this gimbal wheel on the back of the controller exists. So if you didn't know that the controller has a gimbal wheel on the back of it, at least for DJI drones, 
then there is one right here. And the great thing about this is that the gimbal wheel allows you to go and move the gimbal around as you're moving your control sticks. So you can move your control sticks around at the same time as moving your gimbal and you can get really unique shots like this and you don't have to worry about going and touching your screen because if you're doing this the same way here, first of all, you've lost a stick so you can't go up or down and it's just way more difficult to try and move the gimbal around this way while you're flying. Although you can get some unique stuff like this where you're able to move like that, except you'll get the leg in the shot, which isn't the greatest. But when you're doing this, just make sure to know that the gimbal wheel here on the back exists, at least so you can try it out sometime to get some more unique shots. Rookie mistake number eight is having your gimbal speed set way too high. So now after you figured out, okay, there's a gimbal wheel on the back of the drone, you don't wanna have the gimbal speed set to like I have right now. This is just incredibly fast. Okay, I get it. If you're in some place where maybe you're filming something that's moving really quickly, like a race car or something like that, I don't know, then maybe it makes sense if you wanna get like a really quick flip up shot. But generally for something like this, you don't want your speed to be set this high. So in order to change this, it's actually really easy. All you've gotta do is go into settings, go to control, scroll down until you find advanced gimbal settings. And right here are your gimbal settings. There are settings for the cine smooth mode, for the sport mode, and for the normal mode. You can adjust literally everything about how the camera moves, which is fantastic. The main one that you're probably gonna wanna be touching is the pitch speed. So as I adjust this one down, you'll see, look how slowly the gimbal moves now, which is cool. If I move it way up 100, it will move as fast as it can, which is ridiculous. Generally, I keep my pitch speed at around 25 to 30, but if you're doing something where you really need to have a slow shot, then you might wanna consider going down into like five or five to 10, which could be much more favorable compared to sitting here with the gimbal speed set at like 100 and trying to micro move the gimbal wheel in order to get the slow shot that you're after. Also, another important thing here is the pitch smoothness. So this is how at the end there, you'll see how it kind of slows down. If I move this way down, it will just pretty much immediately stop. If I turn it to zero, it literally will immediately stop as soon as I let off the wheel. But if I turn it way up, you'll see it takes a long time to stop here with 30 compared to if you don't have that on at all. So that is something else that you'll want to adjust, but usually I keep my settings around 25 and around 13, which right there, it looks pretty good right there. So that's usually what I stick to. You can play with the yaw smoothness and the yaw speed. That's just simply how fast your drone moves like that. You'll see it moves way faster there. So you can play around with that a little bit, but generally you're gonna wanna pay attention to the gimbal wheel settings here when you're trying to get really nice looking shots. Rookie mistake number nine is moving way too, I'll call it happily while flying your drone. There have been a couple of other YouTubers that have pointed this out in their rookie mistake videos like Ken Heron, which this one was kind of stolen directly from him. And this is just moving around way too quickly when you're trying to fly your drone. If you're trying to go fly here, this is a really cool shot, looks great, but oh wait, what? what's that over there? Oh, let's go over there. I'm gonna go that way now. Nope, this way. Nobody wants to look at footage like that. When you're flying your drone, simply just go forward or perform whatever shot you're doing. And I always would recommend going and leaving the shot to go even further than what you think. Because most of the time when you're trying to edit videos or you're trying to put them together for social media, you'll end up running out of time because you've just went and gotten too short of a shot. And I personally fall prey to this one all the time. I just simply have shots that aren't long enough and they just don't look great. So when you're performing your shots, always just try to lengthen them out, have them nice and smooth, maintain the same subject for like 15 to 20 seconds, and then move on to the next thing that you saw on the side of the camera that you wanna go and look at. Like, oh, there's that tower over there. Let's go over there now. It's always a better option to do that than go and just move around like to random locations while you're flying because that doesn't look great. Rookie mistake number 10 is forgetting to change your camera resolution as well as the aspect ratios or resolution of your photos before actually taking them. This is the most frustrating one that happens to me all the time because drones by default, at least DJI drones, they typically default to 1080p 30 frames per second, which is great and that's fine for a lot of people. However, for people like myself, if you want full resolution videos and photos, 
make sure to go and change that before you go and press record and make sure to be conscious of that because if you go and you're recording something and then you realize afterwards, then obviously you're gonna have to go back and redo all those shots, retake all the pictures, and sometimes they're not as great the second time you take them. So in my case, I'm gonna go and change this to 4K wide and my frame rate of 30 frames per second. Just look at the difference here. Maybe you can't tell if you're not on a high resolution display, but here's this shot. This is 4K. And now we are recording in 1080p 30 frames per second. Same exact shot, same location, but look at the difference. It just doesn't look as great because you're not utilizing the full sensor's potential. So always make sure to be in the correct settings for what you're looking for. And now with the first top 10 covered, we're moving on to some of the bonus mistakes. So bonus mistake number one or overall number two. 11 is not having the proper micro SD card for your drone or SD card in general. So if you're looking to record the full resolution of your drone's camera, which in most cases is 4K nowadays, you're going to need to have the proper SD card. So in this case, this is a UHS U3 class chip. So you want to make sure to have that or higher if you're planning on recording 4K. This can manage up to 4K 60 frames per second. I've personally never had any issues with SanDisk cards. In fact, they've been some of the most reliable cards that I have owned. This is what I have in my Mavic Air 2. If you're looking for a recommendation, I can highly recommend this. I would recommend a little bit higher capacity, but overall, this is a good card. Um, any of the SanDisk ones that are gold like this, those are the UHS U3 chips. So make sure you're looking out for that. Look for that little three that's inside the U. Those are the ones that are capable of the high write speeds required for 4K videos and high resolution photos. Bonus rookie mistake number two or overall number 12 is not paying attention to the app warnings for when there are high wind advisories as well as if there are aircraft in the area. The one more here that is went and put off a lot of the times is the wind warnings. And this one, you know, if you're out, you're trying to get a really cool shot, but it's really windy, it can be very frustrating and I get it. I've been in that situation myself, but seriously, especially if you're flying a drone like the Mavic Mini that just tends to be lighter and get caught by the wind a lot better, you don't wanna be out and flying in those high winds. So always bring your drone down if you're getting that warning. And if the warning is still popping up, consider landing because you don't wanna crash your drone. Is it really worth it to crash your drone and lose all your investment in your drone? Probably not. The same goes for aircraft warnings. If you have an ADS-B sensor on your drone, it will go and notify you usually on the app. So always pay attention to those as well because you don't wanna have a close encounter with a helicopter like I did in Arizona or um, you know, a airplane that's taking off at a nearby airport and just hasn't gotten up to altitude yet. So always pay attention to both of those because those could be deadly for your drone and you know, deadly for your drone career. And lastly, but certainly not least, is bonus mistake number three or overall number 13. And this is don't forget to bring a secondary battery or a third battery when you're out flying, especially if you're somewhere remote where you don't have power around like I'm in right now. This one's really important, especially when you're in really unique locations that you just don't have enough battery life for with one battery. This is something that I understand if you don't have more than one battery, this doesn't make the most sense, but I would highly recommend going out and picking up at least a second battery because it really is a game changer being able to have that additional battery life. Even though this has about 31 minutes of flight time, it's just simply not enough for most locations. And you're always gonna wanna bring along a secondary battery. And along that same note is make sure to bring extra propellers. Extra propellers are key, especially if you're prone to crashing. And even if you're not prone to crashing, you're going to want to make sure you bring along extra propellers. I've broken propellers multiple times in ways that I never even thought I could have. And it's just simply something that you're going to want to have. And when you don't have it, you're just completely out of flying for the day, which is always the biggest downer. So always just make sure to have your extra secondary batteries and your extra propellers. So there you have it. Those are the 13 rookie mistakes that I was able to come up with to throw into this video. I'm sure there are many more that I forgot. So make sure to let me know those down in the comments below and feel free to point out rookie mistakes that I made in this very video myself. One exclusively that I can think of right now is probably that some people prefer to pinch the control sticks 
and argue that you have more control that way compared to just having your fingers on top of the joysticks and moving them around that way. I personally like to move them around that way rather than pinch, but to each their own. But with that said, that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below as well as subscribe for future videos like this from me. Also, you can check out some of my other videos right over there if you can't wait for that. But with that said, that is it for this one. I really hope to see you in the next video. Peace.